This is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham, and I have got Eric and Barb Boysen with me. You're from Maberly, Ontario. Welcome to FYI. Thanks Thank a lot. Uh, thank you for joining us because you, you're out there uh, recently representing all of Ontario, so we appreciate that. So <laughs> we're talking about a, an AGM that ha uh, happened, the 8th Annual AGM for the Forest Ontario's Forest Recovery Canada. Is that, did I say that properly? Yes. Uh, so uh, Forest Ontario is the organization and they also represent another program called Forest Recovery. So, yep. Okay. And that was, right. sorry? You got it right. I got it. There we go. We, you had an AGM and it lasted a few days from February 9th to 11th. And you won a pretty prestigious award for all of Ontario as well, too. So can we talk a little bit about the AGM? Uh, what was it about? And, uh, and just some of the details. You want to go ahead on that? Well, Forest Ontario um, is a network of all kinds of forest practitioners, forest um, conservation organizations, landowners across Ontario that share a common mandate. So annually, they bring people together. And with COVID, um, they haven't been able to do it in person, of course. It's usually in person every year. But in a way, I think they've been able to have even more people on on online gives people who wouldn't ordinarily travel to one central space from across Ontario to to go online and they host a number of different topics of interest whether it's forest health or climate change um, or things like their 50 million tree program that promotes tree planting in Ontario so the AGM is uh, both a business meeting but a good opportunity for people to network all right. Now, you you uh, own uh, New Leaf Forest Services in um, Maberly, is that? Yes. 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 Okay. So, is, is that your property? No, it's a, it's a forest consultants. Um, Z that we've I've been uh, owning for the last uh, several decades. But Eric and I actually have uh, been involved with the provincial government for decades. We're retired now, and we do forest consultants locally. Uh, helping people manage their forests for the last seven years here, but we used to be uh, with the Ministry of Natural Resources at the time in Peterborough, and we did a lot of work with uh, private land forestry, and uh, and I also worked with the Forest Gene Conservation Association, and Eric worked at a higher level in terms of uh, building policy to help private land forests stay on the landscape. So there's this. This award brings knits together a lot of different elements of our 40 year career in forestry. Wow. Primarily wow. focused on private landowners. All right. And like the, the award you won was the Robert Depentier Award. And if I'll read this out uh, for outstanding activities in private land forest management and strong support of forestry promotion and education. Eric and Barb Boyson of Maverly, Ontario got it for their dedication and commitment. Uh, to projects that support healthy forests and their contribution to the original structure of Forest Ontario's 50 million tree program. Sounds like a lifetime achievement award, doesn't yeah. it? Well, <laughs> well, that, that's, well, 50 million trees too. And I, I, I'm not a forester. I, 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 this is a learning experience for me, what you're telling me today too. I, I think of forestry, I think of conservation and I think of, you know, replanting, re, re, replenishing yeah. that, that sort of yeah. thing. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, so maybe I can take you back a little bit. Um, in the uh, beginning and probably the early 1900s, the government, the provincial government got involved in tree planting efforts to kind of put trees back on the landscape after land was cleared for agriculture that should have never been cleared. So in, in and around Smith Falls, we have the Lanark County and the Leeds and Granville Community Forests, which were the remnants or the examples of that. So we, we planted a lot of trees on abandoned agricultural land as a government. And then shift forward to the 60s where they decided, OK, we need to help private landowners with smaller land holdings plant trees. So there was a program called the Woodlands Improvement Act program that helped people do that. And that lasted until about 1993 when it was uh, sunset for both um, financial reasons and other reasons. But the Kempville Nursery or the G. Howard Ferguson Forest Station in Kempville was the one that supplied most of the trees. So we planted lots of trees. And uh, your listeners will know it. they maybe have old Woodlands Improvement Act agreement forests that are now mature forests and really changed the landscape around here from, you know, uh, ag predominantly agriculture to one of mixed forest and agriculture. So more of a healthy balance 
more uh, you know benefits for clean air and clean water, wildlife habitat, that kind of thing. So the 50 million tree program to bring it forward then, um, between 95 and 2005, there was really no opportunities. There was no government help to support private landowners who want to plant trees. But at the same time, we we're starting to talk about climate change and the role of forest have in sequestering carbon. So there's a lot of people that said, well, we've got to reinitiate a tree planting program. And that's kind of where we came in. We did lots of surveys with landowners trying to figure out if they had the land available, would they make it available for tree planting, that kind of thing. And then uh, Forest Ontario, at, um, originally the Ontario Forestry Association at the time, got involved in what they called the 50 million tree program. So 50 million was a notional target over 14 years and they wanted to plant that many trees across southern Ontario and um, it took a while to get things started up again because we didn't really have the capacity in the in the nurseries to provide the seedling stock we didn't necessarily have the seed and so two or three years later they really got underway and are continuing with that program today one of the things that they also didn't have was the local district um technicians and foresters that would go out to the property and help land and donors understand what trees to plant to help them understand you need to tend them for them to grow well and even survive uh and so they in the time when the government had exited from the tree planting program support you did have local programs with conservation authorities that were still kind of keeping tree planting alive at a very uh, minimal level so with the 50 million tree program which provided some government support through Forest Ontario, they were able to then build a network and then build that capacity to plant trees. And one of the main <clears throat> issues, even though we lost the nursery funding at the time and the district staff at the time, one of the biggest losses was that planning, that if you're gonna plant trees successfully, you need to start probably four years ahead. <clears throat> you need to know what the site is like, whether it's sand or clay, you need to know what species, and then you need to get that seed. And that seed, you can't just turn it on. So then you've got to get that seed to a nursery and get them to grow it. And then you've got a site prepare. So it's really that four to five year planning window to really make success. Use I used to say, the worst thing you can do is give me $10 million and tell me to plant trees this year because I'm probably gonna make a mess of it because there's just no way to do it properly because you haven't planned. You're probably trying to match the existing stock with the wrong site. So tree planting is about planting the right tree in the right site for the right reason as right, well. Right, right, planning, so planning for sure. The 50 million, yeah, this is what the 50 million tree program brought together was all those local uh, networks with the oversight from the government and the funding and, and created this infrastructure that's still alive today, thank goodness, and hoping to build. 50 million tree program also gave uh, as, a, as a, uh, a, a warehouse for even clearing house for even funders to come in to say, whether it's a bank that wants to promote funding or other groups, you can donate money to Forest Ontario and they will, make ins they will help ensure that the trees are planted properly. Right, right. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of trees planted Mm. like greenwashing that probably are not alive today because that wasn't really the objective they right. were they were the they were the um, a means to a different end so yeah and the forest ontario and the 50 million tree program has been a great program oh, oh and, and i mean eric you were just talking about going back historically too and it popped up in my mind the, the ice storm of 1998 that ruined a lot of forests yep uh everybody remembers the ice storm of 98. <laughs> really we all know where, where we were at? yes yeah, well, we, we lived in Birds Rapids at the time and uh, two, two and a half weeks without power, but the devastation on the forest was phenomenal. Um, whether it's pine plantations that snapped in half or toppled over, mature sugar bushes that were uh, had the crowns ripped out of them. So it, it really brought people's attention on, on the value of forests and, and, and that you can't just take them for granted. That, you know, where, where did these old trees come from? Well, they grew for a hundred years before you started looking at them. So think about that, you know, right. what, is, what, what kind of conditions did it take for them to grow in a healthy way? But the plantations, I mean, you could you remember the trees uh, just snapped over and broken up. So there was good recovery from that, but I think it brought people's attention back to the fact you can't really take our trees for granted. 
Really, yeah, that was quite a learning curve for me. I, I recognize that too. So uh, you, you just, you look in forests and they were all just broken in half, broken in half. And, and you know, that's not going to be replenished in a couple of years. That's going to take numerous years to do that. That's right. And so there's two ways you can replenish the forest. One, and you can work with the natural forest and try to help it recover. And we do a lot of that type of work. So a maple sugar bush is a good example where, you know, you can sustainably manage that bush for a product for, you know, a hundred years. But if you don't, if you've lost some forest and you can see a lot of agricultural clearing going on around the countryside now, or new home developments and they're clearing out trees. Well, you have to replace those trees somewhere. So this is where the 50 million tree program comes in because we're trying to work or find new landowners that have at least a hectare of land that they want to have planted. And so if everybody contributes and say, yeah, I do have some property that I'm not using effectively and quit cutting the grass and, and create a more natural habitat, um, the 50 million tree program can help them. It's a pretty good program. It's, it's highly subsidized. Um, because if you were to do that on your own, it would cost a lot of money. And so a lot less trees would get planted. So as Barb said, the funding really comes in to bring funders and connect them with landowners to help a landowner subsidize a tree planting because the landowner is contributing the land. We can't plant trees without land. Yeah, it's a right. big contribution. But then you've got another part of that, uh, of that network and in Eastern Ontario here, the Rita Valley Conservation Authority um, has been organizing the tree planting uh, they fundraise for their own small programs, but they're also what they call a program delivery agent for Forest Ontario and 50 million tree program. So if a landowner is interested in planting trees, you can contact 50 million tree program. Mm. Um, they will probably then put you in touch with someone at the Rideau Valley Conservation Authority in this area to get some trees planted to let you know what's available. Excellent. And I know that this time of year, everyone wants to plant a tree. Um, but they have to realize that whatever is available at the nurseries, the tree nurseries, like Ferguson Tree Nursery this year, was planned for three years ago. And chances are it's already allocated. So if you're interested in tree planting, definitely contact Forest Ontario and get in the queue to have someone come out maybe this year, look at your land, decide what species can, uh, can survive and grow well there, and then uh, possibly plant next year or the following year depending Excellent. on whether you need to prepare the site. So it's those complexities that under the 50 million tree program, you have a lot of different specialties working together to make this happen. Oh, well, this is wonderful. This is, I've learned a lot today. So thank you very much. And uh, I, I definitely see, I can see and I can hear the commitment that you have to, to forests. And uh, I totally understand why you got the Robert Depensier Award too. So congratulations for that. Thank you for joining us today. I'm, I'm certainly glad that you put some contacts out there that people can get a hold of people. And uh, so again, today I've got Eric and, and Barb Boyson from Maberly, Ontario, who won the Robert Depensier Award for all of Ontario. Thank you very much for joining us today.